Ooh, welcome to the South. Yeah, so my name is David Johnson. Um, I am about to be very vulnerable and persistent, um, direct, and executing a call to action, a project that I would like to see happen um, in the way of creating a community that helps support each other the best they can in recovery, addiction, um, all that sort of stuff, as well as having an outlet um, of like-minded individuals, whether they're sober or not, and trying to help alleviate the stigmatism behind addiction, and it's a silent suffer, suffering. Um, I know firsthand myself from opiate usage, cocaine usage, um, other illicit drugs. It's a struggle. Daily, moment to moment, I mean, as further we get into this, you'll learn my story, and I've heard a lot of other people's stories that helped motivate me to actually pull the trigger on August 5th of 2019, to which I went a whole year and some change uh, being sober myself, like completely clean, and that adventure was amazing, and uh, it had its ups and downs as well but in a whole different light. And we'll get into that as well, hopefully. But anyway, I would like to challenge Koichi, Erica Derrickson, uh, Brandon Novak. Uh, I'm trying to think who else. Anybody, pretty much. If you have any type of insight, input, want, desire to help with a project of sorts, um, it's going to require a team. I mean... I'm definitely going to try and take direction and facilitate a vision that I think that would help others feel comfortable and inviting and not outcasted or feel embarrassed, shamed, any of that sort of shit. Um, I have no filter in my personal life and in my professional life. I guess people could say that if white privilege was a thing, I would fit the bill. Uh, but I don't believe in none of that shit. Race is nothing but a race, apparently, put in place by... Who the fuck knows, but it's just ignorant. Um, so yeah, none of that sort of shit. Not necessarily be politically correct, but let's respect everyone as an individual or as their identifying group uh, with no hating at all. Um, would like to put into place admins and team leaders, team members, you know, anybody that would be willing to help make this a reality. Please, I am begging. Come through, holler. Like, I'm going to try and get everything set up as far as a contact point um, as soon as I possibly can. This is off the cuff. I mean, I've been on and off thinking about such things for the last two years now. But I have, you know, my own... Hmm, have not flaws. Like, insecurity still, right? And I am coping with the fact that, yeah, I am an addict. Yeah, I have slipped up. Yeah, I feel like sometimes people are very judgmental. And they don't have a right to be, per se. But they just don't know. However, I guarantee that anybody that was to ever say, Oh, addiction is not a disease. Or those people deserve to die because they're doing drugs. Or drugs are bad. Or whatever the case may be. They know somebody, personally. It's probably their husband. You know, or son, or daughter, or aunt, or niece. Any of these labels. Um, they know somebody. Probably just in denial. Or, you know, as I've found with my own personal experience, that it's hard when you come to somebody and you tell them something so heavy, and they have no personal experience with it. It can run them off. And in that moment, 
someone that you might need that person, you know? That's been my, my, uh, experience. I mean, damn, like, <laughs> my story, I feel, is my, is worse than anybody else's. Just like your story is going to be worse than anybody else's. Do you know why that is? Because it's your story, right? And history is a telling of somebody else's story. So do you want to leave it for somebody else to tell your story or do you want to tell your story? I want to tell my story. I want to facilitate that with you. I want to help people find what it is that they've lost. I'm not a psychiatrist or, or any of that sort of thing. So that's a disclaimer there. I cannot provide you any type of mental anything. All I can speak on is my own personal experience. However, I'm definitely going to try and find all resources available to my knowledge nationally um, in order for everyone to have an opportunity to seek the help that they need and hopefully you know not to say this is like an AA situation or NA situation or anything like that uh, I did that for a little bit and I didn't do it at first I wish I kind of did but at the same time I went <clears throat> and what I found out was that Naturally, in my own life, the 12 steps kind of just happened because I was feeling those points that they preach um, naturally. Like, it, it was just instinctive. And they are good. Like, I'm not going to say it's not a good thing. Some people need that, right? I personally just am very introverted. I don't like crowds like that. Um, <sighs> I just don't, I don't, I don't like it. Now, virtual meetings are great. Like that, I really dig because you can go anywhere in the world. You can, you can go to London meetings. You can go to New York, uh, Hollywood, and there's tons of really, really, really talented, cool people that are building their lives and getting back on track <clears throat> and pushing forward and finding that passion that they lost or, you know, whatever it is, man, it's, it's, it's possible. Like, it's possible. You know, Wayne Gretzky said, you miss 100% of the shots that you do not take, right? You can take any shot in any direction and succeed, fail, you know, who knows? Who knows? But if you don't even attempt to take that shot, then what? You can't win a, you can't win a Stanley Cup sitting on a bench. You know what I'm saying? Like, your life is that bench. Do you want to sit around and just let it happen in, in your addiction? Do you want to sit and go to another funeral? from somebody that you love, I don't, my first year, whoo, that shit was tough, I lost, I think it was 13 people I personally knew died suffering alone that I didn't even know had a problem, the same one I was suffering alone at that I thought I was hiding well, some people could tell, some people I told, others had no fucking clue, you know, so... It is what it is, but make it count. Let's fight the good fight together. Seriously, though. I want to do a weekly interview with somebody that has a decent crowd following because the messages and the stories, people can relate. They need to, like, somebody hearing that one thing can flip that switch. You know what I'm saying? And here's, here's something. I'm in my car right now, right? I'm in my car. What do you think I'm doing? Going to get drugs? Nah, not today. Not today. <clears throat> um, coming to the store to get gas? Nah, I did that before I turned the video on. I'm sitting here talking to you in my vehicle. The reality of the situation is I live in my vehicle right now. You know, and that is because of the choices I've made along the way and the losses that I've suffered and the people that turn their backs on me, the people that I have screwed so bad won't have shit to do with me. And I accept this, you know, like in my sobriety, in my clarity, I understand why I am here right now. And here right now is a choice that I've made out of the last uh, three years or so. I've been in and out of my vehicle multiple times because... For instance, I would, instead of paying the rent, I would go buy some perks or, you know, take a line or whatever the case may be. But, you know, your your addictive mind is going to lie to you. It's going to tell you, 
oh, don't worry about it. Like, you can borrow some money tomorrow. You can go, you know, do day labor. You, you got somebody you can do something for to make up that money that you had no control over, really, to, to fulfill. And that's fucked up. It's fucked up. We are inside of a pandemic, inside of an epidemic, <clears throat> and the pandemic is getting more national funding, more national coverage than what we've been dealing with since I feel like has been, since I, I feel like and have seen personally since uh, 2001, like 9-11. Like after 9-11, like that's whenever all the pill mill stuff popped off. That's when like I first actually maybe met a heroin addict for the first time um i think i was, I was still in high school right then like get b about to get out i'm 35 about to turn 36 in october but either way like before that it wasn't a thing you know not since like vietnam when the soldiers were coming back and like they legit had to take drug tests and pass a clean piss test before they would come back home to the states to where after they did like they sobered up long enough to like get back here and then they was right back on it you know that shit is powerful but you are more powerful you know like I don't know I'm in my vehicle this is by choice it's for the best of my personal growth at this point in time that's where like I need to be you're never gonna find yourself nowhere that you don't need to be at like well you could but even still like in that moment you are where you need to be at if that's chasing that next high if that's borrowing this if that's doing this work if that's stealing whatever the case may be man like you're never not where you're supposed to be there just comes a time like i had two moments of clarity right and that brought me to finding my really good crazy universal like <clears throat> friend <clears throat> um erica who has a very flourishing uh, Facebook following, and she's in sobriety, and like it's crazy how I met her. Really, um, I mean we get into all that later, but you know it just happened to be like certain situations happened. I just got tired of it and started working at it, and like people came into my life that like I never would have expected. You know, like I was I was noticed by an actress. And, you know, have communications with all kinds of random people all the time, you know. But if you never speak, you never seek help, you know, you never feel like you're good enough or whatever the case may be, you won't, you won't step out of that, that day-to-day -day grind and hustle, man. And it's, it's sad. It's sad. I had... Uh, a lot of friends when I was dealing drugs, you know, I had a lot of friends whenever I was part of certain groups of friends that were, you know, into some real heavy ass, uh, well, I guess marijuana, but it's not even really a drug anymore. I mean, I don't classify that as a drug. Um, but yeah, like, I had all these friends and shit when, when we were all in in the scene together, we were all partying together, we were all, like, doing the same shit, and then, slowly but surely, people started finding different things, the darker things, the heavier things, that all the other people, well, well you're, you're bad because you do cocaine, uh, well, you're bad because you drink and drive, motherfucker, like, at least if I'm doing my coke, like, I'm gonna be awake, I ain't about to probably crash, I might go a little faster, but, <laughs> you know, whatever, it's, it's all the same shit, may not affect you the same, but the end results could be the same, you could wind up in jail, you could wind up dead, so anyway, I desperately want this to happen, I need this to happen for my own sobriety as well, because I, I know humanity, like, I suffer through other people's pains, I suffer and understand people, like, I look at their situations, I don't judge anybody, you know, when I get approached by some random ass bum, say that and that's rude it's not okay to say but you know like i've seen this man a million times and like he's out here asking people for money every day i'm in my car man i'm like not eating whatever the case is 
I do borrow money from people and shit, but thankfully, like, I, I have a few people that still fucking love me, and they not let me fucking suffer, and it's fucked up because they say blood's thicker than water, nah, man, that shit is diluted as fucking, uh, <laughs> a damn IV bag, like, sodium chloride, right, like, it's, blood's not thicker than water, man, fucking family will fuck you faster than anybody, they will not be there when you need them. You come to them telling them, like I have multiple times, I need fucking help. I need to get out of my environment. Number one, if you can change your environment, if it's drastic as fucking, you ain't got to tell nobody. You can just do it. Go. Like, that is what I think would be first and foremost. Then when you get there, you set up your recovery network. If that's going to AA, that's finding therapy, that's finding Suboxone, that's finding all these different outlets, that's finding a shelter even. Like, if you got to go the next town over but it can always it's always going to be monday no matter wherever you go like there's always going to be a monday like you can change situations monday's still going to come tomorrow's still going to come right so i'm saying that to point out that if you go to a new location you do not start seeking out drugs like that has to be a completely fresh start right like these tools and ideas are available online you can find them everywhere you know, personal pe people's personal experiences. Yo, yo, yo. What up? Not much. <coughs> One second. All right. How are you? It's hot. I'm hot. Yeah. I'm ready to get ready to go home. Get home. Stop to get cigarettes. So, what you doing? Recording a video. Huh? Recording a video. Oh, are you? Yeah. Okay. I guess. Yeah. I'll explain. What's that? I said I'll explain. Um. Mm -hmm. Oh, you got this on you? Yeah. Yeah, I gotta get some cash for you. It's fucking hot. Huh? It's hot. Do what? It's hot. Oh. Um, yeah, cash. Just, uh. I don't know, man. 20 bucks or something. Before. Oh, we're, I'll, I'll figure it out. Yeah. Get the house. Alright, man. All we'll right. see you in a little bit. Sorry about that. I give up the house key to my buddy's place. Um, which is a whole other story in itself. So, where was that? Oh yeah, environments. Changing environments. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. I had an opportunity to go to California. I live in North Carolina, uh, Fayetteville actually, where J. Cole is from, which makes me now an official proud Fayettevillian of the all-American city of Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Home of the 82nd Airborne, Foxy 99, 103.5 that plays only Metallica. <laughs> nah, don't get me wrong. I love my music. Anyway, uh, had I taken an opportunity to go to California, yeah, I'd have left everybody behind, my son included, or whatever the case is. <clears throat> but it was going to be for the greater good of myself to benefit somebody else, my child. Which, you know, ultimately, I want to be able to be behind something for him. You know, whether... That's a house that I pay off. If that's a savings, if that's you know life insurance when I pass away or whatever the case is. Hopefully, and I'm pretty positive that's going to be sober, right? So that could even be a goal. You gotta have goals. You gotta have a chain, attainable goals. Nothing too heavy at first. You need to like sever any type of toxic relationships, friends that are involved in any type of fucking narcotic trafficking, drugs, whatever the case may be. If it if it makes you money illicitly does not belong in your life anymore okay and that's the thing I had to realize like when I decided to cut everybody off when I stopped doing any of that shit I was a broke motherfucker and that was difficult 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 to get through like damn man like I had all the fucking money now I have none it's about to get real dark there's gonna be a purpose for this all right, yeah. I know this video is long. I really want a call to action. I really would like to have anybody that be willing to help. Anybody that wants to come on and interview and share your story, if you can have some type of enlightenment, uh, moral reckoning from it, bring it. Like bring it for real. Because the more people that help and share, it's more content. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this to 
for monetary values in any type of way other than to help if they come they come okay and in my situation right now like i could use it am i looking to do this for that no i'm looking to do this to help somebody else because people have helped me that don't even fucking know me and that's priceless you know what i'm saying like i want somebody to hear something the right way because it clicked and they get help get help I relapsed in October and that hurt bad <clears throat> I hurt very bad you know I was in a crazy ass situation get into all that but uh I lost a friend in October and it hurt bad very bad and I went to my funeral that day like legit I was at my funeral that day you know that's like you been to your funeral it is surreal it is unpleasant it is awakening it is the shock value of shock values in the way of the universe telling you hey guess what motherfucker tighten up you was down down bad yeah you about to be real down down bad not getting back up you can still get up today but if you keep partaking tomorrow may not come all right so i brought us to this location all right let's see how we're gonna do this hopefully my phone don't die i know this video is as long as frick right now and i'm tired of